I'm Linda's favorite sister. I'm her only sister. Um, we were very close growing up, but when we lost our mother at a young age and had survival needs to, to last together, uh, we became even closer, and that bond has never, ever been broken by anything. Um, no matter what, we've always been there for each other. And I will continue to be there for her and her boys and her grandchildren and her beautiful daughter-in-laws. I feel bad because it should be her, not me, but I'll do it anyway. <laughs> I'll suffer through it. Um, we've had so many good memories. We've, done, we've shared friends. We've shared trips and travels. We've lived together for these last 16 years in the same home. We own a cabin together. And like I said, the road trips, we were Thelma and Louise. Um, we've had many adventures and lots of fun. And we had planned some more, so I might have to do them without her. But I'll do them with her in my own way, with her spirit along. And I hope to pass that on to her granddaughters. That simple joy of life, that it can be as simple as complaining about your father all the way you're driving across the country on Route 66 and have to stop every two miles at a four-way intersection and there are all these big semi-trucks blocking your way but by golly you're gonna drive Route 66. There are all sorts of fun things to do in the end that are fun and um, give you something to grouse about and enjoy and, and making those memories and we've had uh, I don't know we've had so darn much fun and even quiet times we could, uh, back in the day when we both smoked, sit up on the cabin porch on a summer night when there was a full moon, and you just sit there and smoke and not even talk. A lot was being said while you weren't talking. Um, wonderful ways to pass the time. Since I was little, she always was raising me to take care of her. I used to have to check under the bed for the boogeyman and the witches, check to make sure the closet was closed properly so no witches got out at night. I was only three years old and, and she was grooming me already to take care of her. But then when we did lose our mother, she raised me and her college sisters, her sorority sisters. I used to take the train down to Cedar Rapids three or four times a school year and it was like having 30 sisters. And to this day, I still feel that way when I see them. Um, they helped raise me too and it was a wonderful, you couldn't buy that kind of love and now I'm going to break down and cry. I miss it. I'm glad I had it. She almost made me a good person. <laughs> she certainly made me a better person. Linda was much more genteel, much more polite. Not that she couldn't be tough, and certainly was in life when occasion called for it. You, she'd be a good one to have back you up, okay? But I was the one who probably wasn't so polite, might not ask permission, just figured out early in life. <laughs> I can give myself permission. Um, so there was a little difference in us. But she had her own way of doing that. And I find myself, just in the last couple of weeks since she left, thinking, oh, I better suck that up and not make a scene about that because it, she wouldn't have. And so in that respect, I think it will continue to change me that there's, you know, in deciding what's worth getting worked up about. She was much more easygoing about things. And she did see. Uh, her own perspective on, on everything and did see it from the middle of the road, which then encompasses everybody, makes that a possibility. So I'm going to try to move to the center a little bit. <laughs> um, probably, um, I'm not sure, something to do with some self-confidences. Not all of them. We both were very fortunate, and I, I couldn't even tell other people how to do this for your children. But our parents instilled in us a sense of self. We knew who we were, and it didn't matter who anyone else was, um, whether they had more money than us, dressed better than us, or had nothing. Um, one time she threw the neighbor girl's shoes in a window well around a tree, and my dad um, got quite angry at her because he said, that's the only pair of shoes that child has. It was a very poor family that was in our neighborhood. And those were strong lessons. And we both learned them, and it allowed us to have our own identities that are very strong without ever being feeling uncomfortable or threatened. You know, wherever you go, whatever you do, it kind of doesn't matter because we sort of know you're just another human being, no matter what. And 
and I don't know how you really instill that in other people. I don't know because I know people older than me that still haven't figured out who they are in life. It's like never been an issue for us. And I think part of, like I said, I wasn't as polite and ladylike as my sister. And sometimes she needed that. And we certainly had fun with that once in a while when I wasn't so polite and got us to the head of the line when we deserved to be whatever. Um, I don't know. I think a little bit of it rubbed off on her. I don't know if she'd say that or not. But certainly there was give and take and support for one another regardless. There was no judgment. There was only love. It was pretty great. You sound so bold. Maybe that's wrong for me to say that. But her decision to go into the Peace Corps and go to Africa alone as a woman back then was extremely bold. You were there to watch that decision. How did she make the decision to go to Africa? You know, I think she had discussed it with our mother before my mother died. My mother died a year before she went, or was going off to college, I should say, and talked about the future and planning college and whatnot, what you're going to do. Our mother, um, had two years of college and she really regretted not finishing and I think that she instilled that in Linda and that having the goal you know keeping your eye on the prize type of philosophy and Linda was torn between foreign service and the Peace Corps of the two strange things to be torn between she took the test for the foreign service she passed she was one of and a, another friend of hers that we're still in touch with passed also and she ended up being a spy for you know 40 years all over the world lived in all these wonderful places um, didn't have a family etc because of her career so I'm so glad my sister chose the Peace Corps instead of the foreign service even though it would have been um, maybe a thrilling and interesting career um, she was smart enough, but smart enough to know that she also wanted some other things in life, and, and I think that's great. I, no, you know, it was just, that was Linda. You just did those things. You went off and, and you did what had to be done, okay? It didn't matter if it was dirty work or hard work or intellectual work or easy work. Um, we came from uh, blue collar roots. My dad had a gas station. He came home at night with oil on his fingernails. He cleaned up though every night. And it just was, um, you worked for what you wanted, okay? And that's, I think we both had that, and we just had different goals. But we always kept each other in sight. We always were there for each other.